In this video, we are going to explore the properties of a triangle with two known side lengths and a known included angle measure. Specifically, how many different triangles can we create with the same set of two known lengths and one known included angle measure? Let's start with the definition of an included angle. This is the angle formed by the two known side lengths. In other words, it's the angle between the two sides. Here is the situation where we know the lengths of the two blue sides. The measure of the angle that we know is the angle formed from these two sides. This happens to be the included angle. In this second example, we still know the lengths of the two blue sides. However, the measure of the angle that we know is not the angle between the sides. This angle is not the included angle and therefore will be covered by a different video and probably a different acronym. Now that we've cleared that up, let's explore the properties of this triangle. How many different triangles can we form with this information? First, let's construct a triangle with two known side lengths and a known included angle measure. For this example, I'm going to use side lengths of 5 and 3.2 and a known included angle measure of 65 degrees. Let's see, how many different triangles can I create? Well, given that through any two points there is only one line, there is only one possible option for the third side, and consequently one possible set of angle measures for the other angles in the triangle. This means that there is only one possible triangle with this set of known information. So this example provides the evidence to support the side-angle-side postulate, which states that if two sides and an included angle of a triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles must be congruent. The order of the letters here is very intentional. The A is between the two S's because the angle is between the two sides. 